Hello guys, welcome back to another part of my Platinum series for God of War. We try and do Platinum in a nice optimal time here. And what is that? This is the Reckoning. We're back as Kratos, as you can see, and we're joined by Freya. I will help you. We're going into Vanaheim. I think this is our first visit here. Her home world, I home realm, should I say? Uh, you'll learn a bit of story about it throughout this mission. But there's a few collectibles to get in this one, so please pay attention when you can hear me talking about something which sounds important, which isn't very often. But I try to make a good point of it when it's something of critical importance. And um, near the end of this mission, you, you do get the opportunity to do some optional exploration. You can do so, but the thing is, we're missing a few of the abilities or the items, key items which we need to um, access a lot of the collectibles so even though you can explore some of the optional areas which do have some collectibles you can get now in this mission at this point in the story you won't be able to get them all so if you do it now it means you're just going to have to go back on the path which you've already been on and just do it all over again so because of that the optional exploring at the end of this mission we're going to avoid it and just crack on with the story and then later on probably in about when we come back here later, either during the main story or at the end of the game, then we'll just get it all at once. We actually have most of our abilities which you need to access everything required for Platinum after Mission, mission 10. I'll tell the name of it in a second. So it's not actually Mission 10. You get all like weird submissions, which will be like Return to Sindri's, and um, then it's finished like instantly. But here guys, when you first come in, just follow the left path and you find this big pond and you see that raven flying about. This is raven number 9 of 48. There you go. Just try and get that one your best you can. Yeah, I'm just trying to find the name of that quest, that mission, where we, by that point at the end of it, you should have everything you need to, um, when you're exploring, to get everything you need for platinum. There are some things which don't unlock until after you complete the game, but most of the things tied to that are not actually related to um, Platinum, mainly for 100%, but we don't actually have to 100% for Platinum, of course. Come on, then. You had a way around Odin's curse this whole time. No. Yeah, the mission, uh, when you should have the abilities which you need to um, unlock most of collectibles when you do an option exploring is Forging Destiny. Yeah, so when you're on Forging Destiny, guys, uh, throughout that mission, you'll get the final, well, one of the final sort of main upgrade abilities. It'll be a new weapon, actually. And that will allow you to reach a lot of collectibles. So after that point, we'll probably be, all these optional areas which we pass in the story, we'll probably complete them all as we go along. But we actually do fully explore an area just before that in a part no, uh, mission nine, I think it is part nine. That should be on my guide. That'll be in Midgard. Yeah, and that mission is the World of Fate. So when we get to the World of Fate mission, yeah, we'll be doing a lot of exploring. Then we'll probably explore like 95% of the map. We'll explore lots of re regions which you don't have to have to do, but we'll be doing that um, just because. At that point in the story, you can actually get about 95% of the collectibles which you need for Platinum. Um, but anyway, enough about that. Let's get on with this mission. Yes, yeah, so we've got that Raven. And uh, that's a little bit collected here, but not too much. Yeah, not too much. You've got that Raven. Uh, down here, got an artifact. This should be artifact number 12 of 38. Upon pursuing a place not marked on maps. Yes, yeah, so you have to bash through that flooring and it's just in there another artifact and then next we should come across another Norna chest Norna chest number 5 of 30 which should have a Iden apple inside you should see this one ahead of you as you just crack on the story so even if you want to move on ahead of me just keep an eye out for the next Norna chest you can't miss it you should pass it and you should see it as long as you've sort of been observant of your surroundings It's not long after this second enemy encounter. Yeah, 
Yes, a few bosses at the end of this video as well. And you also get a few trophies here. Finally. Yeah, you get one of the shields which you need for a trophy. You need all five shields, we get one of them from here. The Shatterstar shield. And an, yeah, another thing I'd like to say actually. When we go into the mission, World of Fate. Yeah, you might want to do that by the way. Go into Spartan Rage and switch that back to Fury. It might have been on Valor already from the last mission. I think it changes, you get that tutorial for using Spartan Rage to heal, don't you? But if you want to change it between healing healing, and using Fury, you have to change it in your inventory menu, which I just did. Yeah, in that mission, The World of Fate, we actually start upgrading our character a little bit. Because you probably noticed, if you're doing the minimal like me, you're probably quite underpowered. And um, all the enemies are taking quite a bit to kill them. Yeah, like I said, because I'm underpowered. But yeah, once you get to World of Fate, we'll start picking up our armor. And we should get to about level 4. Which should bring you up to about even playing field with all the enemies. For a little bit. But yeah, this is that Nora chest. There it is. Just past it. And this is where the seals are. I've got one already. We have to do, um, yeah, you free the bambles by burning them. Burn the ba uh, brambles. And then throw the axe, obviously, at them to turn them to the correct symbol. Which is obviously on the Norna chest. And there you go. Like I said, it'll be an Iden apple. Yeah, so what you're going to do now, guys, just carry on the story a little bit. Soon you'll end up in like a, a sort of settlement, and there'll be a cutscene. And what I do, I'll pick up the commentary after that, because there's nothing of importance to collect on the way. Uh, but once we get to the settlement after the cutscene, there'll be something shortly after, as we get back on with the story. And you want to keep your insides inside. Yeah. All yours, big guy. Your people aren't receiving visitors? I wouldn't know. They're not my people anymore. Give me a boost. <clears throat> you don't go telling no one about that. Run up! Bet you're glad old Brock's around to see you. Uh-oh. Shit! What? Ah! We should probably go get him. Keep your guard up. This is where the cutscene begins, guys. So I'm just going to edit out this cutscene and begin the gameplay just afterwards. You'll get control back a little bit briefly, and another cutscene will start shortly after. But once you get control back, if you head over to your lost item chest, you should be able to get anything uh, which you didn't pick up from any enemies you killed. I actually get the sharp shooter stair accessory. Um, that's for a Trius. And I believe that's from the last mission, which I didn't loot. You'll find some of the mis some of the areas you go into, which you can't revisit. Anything of importance from there is actually put in your lost item chest, or it's put in the crafting menu in the shops. But yeah, sharpshooter stare. I think a boss may actually drop that. Can't quite recall. But yeah, see me get it there. Bow abilities for Atreus.
and you should be able to um, level up your Leviathan Axe as well. Yeah, I think I got a Frozen Flame in the last part as well. Uh, we didn't quite see me pick it up. Or well, in the part before, uh, I just didn't kill the. I just didn't um, pick up the loot from the enemies. But yeah, make sure you level up your weapons, guys. If you've got any more upgrades, and then once you're done, come and interact with the prompt over here for another brief cutscene. Now you have control back, guys. You can make way outside the little settlement and carry on with the story. The first collector we're going to come to in a second, well, probably a, a good few seconds, plus a few more, and then another few. You're going to come to another raven. This should be raven number 10 or 48. Just after leaving the cave, if you go left, you'll find this perched on a branch above the swamp. This is all in my text guide, as you know. I've mentioned it a few times. Yeah, but if, even if you want to look at my text guide, you should be able to see a few parts ahead, because I'm actually planning these out um, I'm actually a few parts ahead, uh, but I'm just sort of adding the commentary each each day. Each day I upload these, I'm adding the commentary. So yeah, if you if you want to see how far I am ahead, look in the text guide, and you can see there, guys. So you, you got a raven. Next thing is going to be a boss. This it's not it's not a proper boss. It's I mean it's got a, it's got a boss gauge, so it sort of technically is, but it's not a it's not like one of the proper story bosses you know which has a lot of story around it and it sort of drives the story a little bit before you know before you can uh, progress it yeah you just got this big rock dude on the left here you probably remember these from the first game but he sort of ignores you until you get his attention by lobbing your sword at his back your axe yeah so you see he's got a purple health bar that's because he's a good few levels above me and like I say, that's probably not going to change for a lot of enemies until we get into Mission 9, the World of Fate, which is like I say, we're going to start upgrading ourselves. But the way to kill these guys quickly, when they when they reveal their um, their weak spot or their their inner their inner core, yeah, once you reveal their inner core to like shoot things at you, you lobby axe at him and it make all the orbs pop out. And you want to lobby axe at it a few times so multiple orbs pop out and they throw them orbs back at its weak point and they do tons of damage. They do tons of damage and that's how you kill them guys pretty quick. If you try and hit them when their core is not exposed, um, you'll be you'll do much less damage. I mean he's he's purple, so he's a good few levels above me, but I still killed him pretty quick. Yeah, lob an axe at the core when it's exposed a few times, lob the orbs back at him. And that's how you kill him quick. But yeah, loot the forest ancient afterwards. You should have got chaos flame from him. You should have got bonded leather times five, hack silver times seventy-five, and shattered rune times twenty-five. Yep, I've listed down all these materials which we're getting from bosses and whatnot in my text guide. Only from bosses though. I don't really mention from any normal enemy. You know, unless it's something very important. Yeah, when it when it comes to materials, which you need, by the way, to um, upgrade, we have to fully upgrade the armor set for platinum. Yeah, fully upgrade the armor. You don't actually have to fully upgrade your your main weapons like you did on the first game. Here, you just have to fully upgrade any armor set. It's a bit of a weird one, actually, that because you know, yeah, in the first game, you had to fully upgrade your weapons, and you think this, you think if anything, here they would make you fully upgrade your main weapons, but not the armor set. But no, it's the opposite. You have to upgrade your armor set, but not the main weapons. Um, but yeah, the, click, the items which you need to fully upgrade your armor, some of them is very rare, but following me and doing only the minimum required for platinum should get you what you need. And if it doesn't, don't worry, because I will be explaining it all to you anyway, as you go along. Same like as I'm doing with the favors by saying this favor is needed, we're going to do this one. But that one is not needed, so we're not going to be doing that one. Yeah, a lot of stuff isn't needed, needed and we're going to be ignoring it. Yeah, so a bit of forest ancient. He's going to continue through the woods. And the next thing you actually come across after that boss, the next thing of importance, it's going to be a shield in a legendary chest. There'll be like, there'll be these poison totems which you have to throw your axe at to freeze the poison and stop it from uh, surrounding the area. And then you drop down, you drop down off a sort of platform, and there's a chest, legendary chest with Shatterstar shield. Um, but what what I do, guys, I'll um, 
I'll just let you enjoy it for a moment and I'll come back on commentary once we get to that next key item so you know between here and there you can just get on with the story. service of a cruel god i was tricked into destroying a village not knowing my own wife and child were there until their blood stained my hands i swore revenge that's i can't imagine i paid back their blood a thousand times and burned olympus to the ground yet the guilt remained perhaps you will kill me freya but it will bring you no peace Perhaps it is not peace I seek. All those times I found you. Why'd you refuse to fight me? Every outcome would mean defeat. What does that mean? I have never wished you harm, Treya. You helped us. You saved Atreus when he was sick. I did not wish to live with killing you any more than I wished to die. I see. No And so close to the village! Their song makes their allies invulnerable! They will not let you pass unless you destroy them all! I hardly recognize you. I used to play hide and seek with prayer in the crops. We'd spend afternoons stealing honey bread from the Grand Hall. At harvest time, we dance and feast until the sun rose. It was all so simple. Why did I have to come back here? And be reminded of all this. The Grand Hall. It's in ruin. I hear them inside. Get ready to clear them out. <laughs>
Desecrated every memory I have of home. Be glad you have a home to remember fondly. In Sparta, we were taken from our homes as children and raised in the Agoni. We marched though we drowned, fought for scraps or starved. Our elders beat us till we could not stand. At night, we made our way home, alone, or were food for wolves. That is how Spartans are made. These plants behave similarly to the scorn poles we found in the foothills of Midgard ages ago. We'll get that new key item soon, guys. Yeah, that's that's quite a it's quite a long bit without anything of importance to collect, isn't it? And we did pass a lot of optional stuff, but yeah, you don't need any of that unless you just want to focus on building your character. As we go, which is probably advisable if you're playing on harder difficulties. But yeah, once you climb up here, after releasing that chain, the really releasing that chain is like a sort of landmark if you want to know where this item is. So once you released that chain by burning the brambles and climbed up it, shortly after on the right is this legendary chest, guys. And that will have the Shatterstar shield inside it. That is needed for platinum because there's a trophy for getting all five shields and that is one of them. So once you've got that, Raise this zip, zip line and then slide on down. We'll shortly be coming across a Norna chest soon, shortly after this. A Norna chest 6 or 30. That should have a horn inside, a horn of blood meat. There's another little puzzle uh, to get it. You have to rotate this, you know, it's got one of them cranes which you have to turn around. Yeah, I didn't mean to do that. I do that quite a lot. I actually keep, yeah, keep doing that quite a lot. Wasting my fury. It's because you press an L3 to run, but then sometimes you're pressing R3 uh, just so the camera locks onto the um, story uh, story direction. You know, if you want to crack on the story still, it doesn't. It's not always reliable that. You know, sometimes it will lock onto the wrong direction. Um, but yeah, once you get here, guys, you have to uh, little puzzle. You have to move, like I say, you have to move this um, crane around. But while you are doing this, you want to keep a lookout for some seals related to the Norna chest. The Norna chest is actually over this part, this little puzzle, so you wouldn't actually know about it unless you know beforehand, you know, until you get there and actually see the Norna chest. But yeah, what you want to do first is um, bring the crane over here and then grapple across and then you want to bring the crane sort of back around going down to clockwise and you need to use it to burn them brambles. What you have to do when it gets here, you have to pull the brazier towards you, but you want to knock it to the left. You can't actually see it. I mean, you can see it now because it's lit up. But between that tree roots on the left, there's actually a brazier for the Norna chest, a light which you have to light. So all you do is swing it to the left first to light that Norna chest uh, torch on the left. And then you swing it towards you and then it'll swing back and burn the brambles. And just below us on the cliff wall is another torch just there. You see it, that blue one just lit up when I swung that to the left. So yeah, swing that to the left, it should burn that torch there. That one just there, I'm just showing you another angle. And then once you've done so, bring the crane back over to you and use it to cross over. And the last the last torch is actually next to the chest. So once you're across, take a hard right, come back down the slope, get that third torch, and there you go. You can access the Norton chest, guys. Once you've got this, just continue on a bit more. And I'll pick up the commentary once we be, uh, meet the next boss. Look around you, Kratos. See what happens when you don't fight a true evil.
That's one of Odin's captains. On your travels, you eventually bump into this guy, Fisk. Yeah, so he's he's sort of a little bit like a sub boss, you know, because you you know exactly what I mean when you get to the boss at the end. Um, this guy is nothing compared to the boss at the end. In I guess a size comparison. But this guy, he will drop bonded leather times ten, which is just a crafting material. Uh, but he also drops the glaive of a daughter, which is a relic which you need for platinum trophy. I guess it's story related in a way. But as you can see, it's quite easy to beat. There you go. Yep. <laughs> Impale him on your spear or his spear. Kratos likes to do that, kill kill enemies with their own weapons. But yeah, you get that one guys, the Glaive of Dodder, like I say, that's a relic which you need for platinum. Story related. I still keep my Talisman of Main on me. Yeah, Talisman of Main. That seems to be the best bonus so far. Though that, that one that gives a, um, a burst of Spartan Rage don't look too bad. But I guess just choose whatever you prefer. But when I start to use my XP, I, I only really upgrade my... You can use XP to buy skills, can't you? But by this point, you've probably got a lot of XP yourself. But yeah, I only use XP to when I do. I think it's part eleven, part ten. No, part eleven. Yeah, part eleven when I actually start <laughs> spending some XP. Yeah, it took me a while. I'm a pretty, I'm a bit of a tight bastard. But I decided to spend some in the end. Yeah, first I upgraded my Spartan Rage to full because for any build you want to use, that's going to be useful. Um, then I went with, I think I went with my relic. No, the thing is, your relic don't matter too much. You might be changing that out. I think it's Spartan Rage, and then I actually leveled up my runic attacks. So you do more damage. You probably know it's your runic attacks. Don't really need. Don't, they don't really do much damage because you need to upgrade them a bit more. If you upgrade them, they do do a lot more damage. Uh, but the thing with that, similar to what I said with the relic, if you change what runic attack you have, obviously that's not going to be upgraded. But I'm not going to be changing up much. I know I'm going to be keeping them same builds because my build is not very creative at all. Um, but yeah, if you want to put XP into anything, follow me, I guess. Go Spartan Rage first and then try put it into your runic attacks to make it more powerful. And then probably put it into your relic after that. But yeah, you got a little cutscene here, guys. And then another boss triggers. Yep, this little fella. Like I said, the last boss is nothing compared to this dude. This is a proper boss of the mission. The other one was just a warm up, an appetizer, if you may. Yeah, so you just attack him a few times, and eventually you should should stagger him, and you can get loads of damage on him. What I'm trying to do here is you see his stagger gauge. When you stagger him, it will start depleting, where both sides start get smaller as it shortens towards the middle. Um, but what you can do to maximise your damage is attack him a bit. And then when it's near the middle, that sort of gauge, the stagger gauge, when they're trying to recover, press R3 at the last moment, you know, to get more damage from it. You can do something, you can do something similar if you Spartan Rage. You know, if you use your Spartan Rage, if you know, if you try using all your different attacks, the L2 attack uses a lot of your Rage Meter. Uh, but if you wait until you've got a, like a little tiny bit of Rage Meter left, and then press R2, you in, you in essence get a free... You get free cast of your more, most powerful hit in Spartan Rage. Yeah, so that's why in Spartan Rage you see me just using R1 attacks. And then eventually I start using L2. And the last attack when there's only a tiny bit of Spartan Rage left. Fury left. Just so we can do that massive attack without wasting any of the gauge. So yeah, once you've done so much damage, uh, Freya will come and join in. And give you a hand. Yeah, she wasn't much useful as a bird, but she is now. She's more useful now. Now she's got her former, her former form back. Well, what, what you'll need to do now is um, Freya will occasionally shoot her arrows, and you have to lob your axe at them, and that should stagger the boss, and you can get some more hits in. If you don't keep missing like that. Yeah, stay away from his breath. Your axe. 
Here we go. Yeah, once she mentions her sigil, three axe at it, and that should stagger the boss. Or something like that. And there we go. Now quickly attack him. Yeah, don't get sucked up. They do a little bit of damage to you. Yeah, when he, you see the double blue rings, obviously you can run up and double tap dodge. Uh, sorry, double tap block to uh, stun him. I do change my shield a bit later, actually, so don't break as much. The Berserker bosses, sh shielding does actually... It does actually help quite a lot, actually, by, you know, not not um, dodging or doing a perfect parry, but just holding block and blocking in attacks. Yeah, it does actually help with a lot of bosses that you have a lot of difficulty with. You can block, you can just stand there and block a lot of attacks, depending on your shield. You know, as long as it's not like a red attack or an attack with a ring around it. I think attacks with a yellow ring around, you, you need to parry. So you can still take damage from them, even if, if you're blocking. But obviously red attacks you can't block at all, you have to dodge. And these you could probably parry back to him. Yeah, so this one, you can actually see the brambles on the tree. So um, for that one you have to use your brambles on the sigil to amplify its power and knock it down. Quite a long boss, really, isn't it? Yeah, so if we can get Shield Strike on its tail, that's awesome. So you should, should stun him for a good few seconds then, allowing you to get a lot of, a lot of hits on him. And come on, he's about done. Last health bar. Yep, so this is it, guys. So there will be a tutorial, uh, not a tutorial, sorry. Cutscene afterwards. Uh, but then there will be a tutorial because you'll get your first enchantment. Enchantments are something you can um, you can slot on your, your, your uh, amulet. Similar to the um, enchantments in the first game, but here you don't have, it's not like each sort of piece of um, equipment can have an enchantment on it. Here you just got one one sort of amulet and you can just unlock up to nine en enchantments for it. Right, this should be it. There you go, guys. Got him. So, yeah, get through the cutscene afterwards. And um, I'll pick up the commentary just after. And we're going to pick up the first items that the boss dropped, which should also pop some trophies. Yeah, after that cutscene, guys. Yeah, we're just about to get control back. Pick up this little bag on the floor. You have to pick this up. It's sort of story related. You can't move until you press X or circle, depending on if, you, if you've got it switched. Like I have, or not. Yeah, but there's the amulet. And you slot your first enchantment. And you get that trophy. How it all started. And you also get that trophy root of the problem. That's for beating that boss. Nidhog. I suppose it's time to face my brother. And after that. Yep, and then just after, make sure you grab a frozen flame on the floor as well. Which the boss dropped. If you don't, don't matter. I mean it being lost property. Uh, but yeah, just grab that afterwards if you remember. We can take the frozen flame. The I can help with the vines. And now you can actually burn these um, these vines now by using Freya's sigil. You'll probably you probably pass a few of these. And if you've done any side exploring, uh, you would have known that there are certain brambles which you can't burn. Yes, yeah, because you need to use, uh, like say, Freya. 
she'll shoot the dual arrows at the brambles and they'll amplify it and then you can burn it it's it probably it's sort of like it's you know it's a harder type of wood you know it's more flame resistant i, I don't know but yeah if you can't burn it just with a normal attack use a sigil and that should work afterwards but it's going to be a lot of there's not going to be much to collect now guys basically there's a bit of traveling a bit of story and then once you get near the exit there'll be an artifact to collect right near the end just between now between now and the artifact there's nothing else of importance to pick up and um, so so I just let you enjoy the gameplay um, up until the next cutscene and then I'll come back then just let you know about the cutscene and then we'll cut the cutscene now and then I'll pick up commentary back when we get to that artifact guys there might be a few battles on the way there but nothing of great importance that you need to worry about collecting anything it's not as though I want to be angry with Freyr he's my brother he was the most important person in the world to me for half my life. These plants are the same as those we saw earlier. Frost should make quick work of their poison. Well done. Watch out, those are wisps. Powerful manifestations of runic night. and Hardy are in Vanaheim? We learned the Giants rescued them from Odin and brought them here. And look, the sunlight wakes the sleeping roots. See how they stretch to welcome the sun? Beautiful, no? A far cry from the sheets of Midgard snow I've grown accustomed to. The east At least the whole realm hasn't fallen to predators and occupiers. I guess there's still something to be fought for here. Something to defend even after so much damage has been done. Maybe that goes for Freyr, too. Go! 
much has happened since I last saw Freyr. I'm not even sure where to begin. What do you want from him? An apology would be a start. I want to forgive him. I'd like to think he's changed. He's all I have left now. Did you ever apologize to Demos? It is difficult to seek forgiveness when you feel unworthy. Now how to get across? My sigil arrow should be able to carry the fire across the river to reach the bramble. All my former spouse taught me was that there's no limit to the depths to which a soul can sink into darkness. Tricked me into marriage to spare my home and took my home just the same. Scattered my people to the wind. Maybe it's time somebody drew the line. Maybe it's time someone makes Groa's prophecy come true. I will not wish for war, Freya. War is a terrible thing, Kratos. But some things are even worse. You know, if Atreus rushes to Ragnarok, you may not be able to stop him. I will. And if you fail? I have prepared him to survive without me, if he must. <clears throat> so what's next for you, if not preparing for war? I do not know. But I will take no chances with Atreus. Well, you may want to think fast, unless you want someone to make that choice for you. Ready? As I ever will be. It's quite a trek getting back here. You thought it would have made it a bit easier, you know, being able to just drop. Uh, but once you get back here, guys, of course, there's going to be a few cutscenes. After that cutscene, back at the camp. You first have to pick up Murmur. Well, what's left of him. And then you have to head back to Freya's camp once you're ready. You can get a few requests here. If you, sorry, a few favours. Um, one or two of them do actually need to do him for Platinum. But we're not going to be doing them yet. Because if you... To do him now, you'd have to explore an optional area. Uh, and doing it now, it's just going to be wasting time. It's not going to be an efficient use of your time. Because coming, doing it later, when we've obviously got all our abilities, it uh, just means we can do everything we need to do rather than do a bit now and a bit later on, uh, which is going to be wasting time. You know, going through the same area twice. So yeah, any favours here, we're just going to ignore them for now, guys, but don't worry, we'll come back here later. But after getting a moment, like I say, head back to Freya's camp, and once we get near the Mystic Gateway, where this artifact is, I'll point it out to you. Uh, just remember, there's nothing of importance until you hear my commentary come back and talk about the artifact. I suppose that big fella retrieving with might want to help me with the thing. Mayhaps. 
Now and again, he's in the mood to make you fool. Shall we go? I remember where to look for a gateway. Follow me. Well, you two seem to be getting on since completing your mission. Yet I hope this alliance has some staying power after all. It seems to me we share a common enemy. Kratos, you may not accept that Ragnarok is inevitable, but you're smart enough to know Odin is a threat. Whatever comes next, our best chance of surviving it is to work together. Do you agree? I do. Then as to Brock's offer, you can imagine staying under the same roof as a couple former enemies? No further temptations towards terrible vengeance? Not against you. Either of you. You have my word. This lock is different from others you might know. You'll need an enchantment on your chisel to use it. Bruna. Go ahead, carve the letter. Suna. Suna. The elves in Freyr's camp mentioned a gate like this in our time. They're talking about some sacred light elf sanctum out past the barrens. A trip to Alfheim. Well, we can decide at the gateway. This boat should get us there if we can clear those vines. Remember what to do? <laughs> really alive? Aye. Not exactly ship shape. He sleeps in a broom closet now. But he's adjusting. How did you find him? Largely, that's down to Atreus having figured out how to access the prophecies giants reserved for their own kind. We only learned of it ourselves after Thor and Odin came calling. To your home? Is it still standing? Barely. But all the violence was seemingly just a distraction to let Odin have a private word with Atreus. Odin was alone with your son? Did he tell you what they spoke of? Yes. He said that Odin invited him to Asgard to help him find his answers. The answers he's rushing into fate and search of. That's troubling. Well, if you're ready to talk to him, the Mystic Gateway is ahead. If not, I have some unfinished business up this river. Once you're about to leave your boat by docking at this far beach, there's the key item we need, this artifact. This artifact is number 13 of 38. And that is um, Family Quests, uh, Skurnus Crest. Yeah, Family Crests, that one. Yeah, 13 of 38. Yeah, that, there's a big piece of, um, like a stone pillar, which is fallen and it's blocking the river. Uh, you have to move that to get to the optional area, but because we're avoiding it for now, we're just gonna leave it. Uh, we're gonna come to the Mystic Gateway, we're going to head back to Sindri's when ready. And there's going to be a little cutscene with Atreus, guys. Tell me where he has been. That is my approach. Ah, classic Spartan diplomacy. Wait. Did you say Odin invited him to Asgard and then he disappeared for two days? Aye. But surely the lad's got more sense than... Don't underestimate Odin's powers of persuasion. He filled my son's head with lies. Why wouldn't he do the same with yours? Can you tell that one 
my nut sucker, he owes me one. Fight me now and eternally. Well, looky there. Glad you could make the trip, your goddessness. I put your sigil magic on the young turd's bow. But then he and Sindri got into it over something. Mm. Atreus. Well, come on then. Hey, Tyr! Wake up! You got company. Now, why don't you just make yourself at home and. After that little cutscene with Atreus, uh, you'll get control back of him. Yep, and you find your way here in Midgard. So just take take care of these first bunch of enemies. There's there's not too many, but once you get past this part, the next main mission will trigger, uh, the runaway, and that's where we'll be calling it a day. Yeah, so it's just a lot of these guys. Oh, I always forget their names. Yeah, but you just get rid of these and they can progress. You have to kill them because there's a log you have to jump over. Uh, sorry, interact with, and it won't let you do so when all these guys are on the map. There are some battles which you can run past, uh, that's why I'm just saying that, just in case you're curious. Yeah, you have to kill all these, otherwise it won't let you interact with the rock. Uh, but once you've got them, you'll notice you'll get XP. Yeah, it won't let you interact with this rock. But once you lift this up out of the way, you'll jump across, and that's our next mission, guys. Run away. Yeah, the next missions, there's not much collect there. Or the one after that, uh, but so not part seven, not part eight, but part nine, we're gonna have tons to collect, guys. It's probably gonna be one one of the most complicated parts yet. Um, but yeah, that's it for that video, guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.